All right, so that we have one that both agree on. We have yep. uh, the ones that we uh, can't believe people believe. Okay. What is one that you want to be real? One that I want to be real. Earlier I said I do not believe that there are aliens. Oh, God that damn come it, Kenny. That, this one was mine. But what I want to believe is that aliens came to the earth and helped build the pyramids, gave us the knowledge to build the pyramids and Stonehenge. That I is... would fucking love it <laughs> if little green men or if they were able to come here and take our form. They came here and gave us the knowledge to do what we would have a hard time doing today. That is such a wholesome, such a wholesome conspiracy theory. Oh my God. That is such a good one. Oh my God. Yes. I was going to, I was also going to say aliens, not specifically for the pyramids or Stonehenge, but just aliens in general. I would, that is the one that I really, I, I want there to be a huge government cover up. I want to be a hundred percent wrong about it. I want to see spaceships and beings from another galaxy yeah. or solar or i want little green men to have traveled light years in some craft yeah. and come here for some fucking reason and i want them to be so good at navigating the universe yeah but so bad at navigating the earth well that that okay i'm glad you just said that because this is what i inherently or why i don't understand how people get oh we captured aliens because if they came here they were able to compute and be able to leave their star, leave their planet, make it all the way here, enter our atmosphere. With some advanced fuel source that we don't yeah, understand, we some yeah, propulsion system energy, that we can, yep. Yeah, that it would take to do so, right? And they get here and, and they're they like. they get oh. here and they get captured by dumb humans <laughs> and they can't leave. No, or, and nobody's coming to get them. Or they get. No, 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 no. That or, ain't happening. Or they travel all that way and they get here and they're like, oh, f- what the f- mountains? What the fuck are these? Yeah. Why are there f- giant rocks everywhere? What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or or it, it, here's what is so funny about that in general is just if you think about the first cre- of Roswell, 1940, whatever, and then the theory goes, right, that the United States developed some sort of uh, what radio wave frequency or magnetic thing to like drop these craft out of the sky. F- really? We possess the technology here on Earth to disable an advanced aircraft right. that can travel light years, travel through wormholes, and yet we're going to point some magnets at it and it's going to get right. fucked up? I don't think so. Right. He just folded space-time into that you know, piece of paper. <laughs> you know how they do that paper yeah. on every fucking movie? <laughs> this is space travel. And they fold the piece of paper and put a yes. pencil through it. They just did that in real life and... But they got captured by us. Oh, no, right. Not buying it. Don't worry. We have the we have the best cell phone towers. <laughs> These five G towers are capturing <laughs> all the UFOs. Yeah. That's what the five G's for. Yeah, I can't get service in in <laughs> parts of the building <laughs> I work in, but we're sending radio waves yeah. to knock down a UFO. That's right. Get the fuck out of here. Uh, not ooh. buying it. Not. Um, but I wish. Not I a, really do wish. Because okay, because I say this. I say this. I work for a construction company. And if a a company was gonna build, a, say they're, they're, the pyramids is not a thing, right? But this is somebody's idea in 2024. They say, you know what? In the fucking desert, I want your company to build this. And he gave us blueprints for the 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 great pyramids. Name a construction company that you think could pull it off. None. Right. So they pulled this off back way back in the day with no equipment. Well, I take I take that back. I take that back. Okay. I think Skanska, the largest construction company in the world. Okay. They could do it. It could be done. Yes. I believe. You think so? I do. But I don't think anybody has the money to do it. Well, okay. So when I say could it be done i'm not just talking about physically building the blocks what i'm talking about joseph is getting it like because when you look up the cons or the look up the coordinates of the uh the pyramids you look up all the information about it 
It's built built in a very specific place on Earth. The distance between them, you can get the circumference of the Earth, uh, the height of them. You can get the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The like, have, do you not know all of this? No. Oh, my, Joseph, let's take a second. <laughs> I want you to like. I'm serious. Go to YouTube. Okay. And type uh, information about the earth in the pyramids it's unreal what they did joseph so that's what i mean because what i'm saying is yeah they could put blocks together but there are also big blocks that are bigger than we know how to handle today that are within a paper like you can't even get a piece of paper through the great pyramid is aligned to within 3 60th of a degree of north a more accurate alignment than any other structure on Earth. When you look at the Great Pyramid's alignment, it's aligned very, very close to true north. Even more interesting is to think about tracking back in time because the Earth's axis has been shifting slowly. It's what we call processes. And so if there's been a shift in that alignment, it could be that it was even more accurately aligned to north in the past when they built it. The Great Pyramid is not only perfectly aligned to the cardinal points, its placement on the Earth is seemingly intentional as well. If you pass a great circle from the Great Pyramid through its cardinal and its ordinal directions, what you find is that these circles will pass through more landmass of the Earth than any other location on the Earth. You find that the Great Pyramid is essentially located at the centre of the world's landmass. The Great Pyramid was built with a level of technological sophistication far in excess of anything that we have today. They don't use the inch as we normally have it in the English system, it's the cubit. And what's interesting about this cubit is that it is exactly 1 25 millionth of the polar diameter of the Earth, meaning the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole of the Earth. Chop it up into 25 million pieces, there's your cubit. It's perfect. Is that if you actually take the length of the Great Pyramid at its mean socket level, which is the corners of the actual building, it translates into 365.24 pyramid cubits, which just happens to be the Earth a year right down to a quarter day. The measurements of the length and width of the perimeter of the Great Pyramid correspond to an exact fraction of both the latitude and longitude measurements at the equator. Scaled up, this means the Great Pyramid directly corresponds to the circumference of the equator, as well as the measurement from the equator to the pole, making it a scale model of the Northern Hemisphere. If you take the location of the Great Pyramid as a coordinate, this number sequence of this coordinate matches exactly the speed of light traveling through space, measured in meters per second. This is amazing stuff. When you consider the vast amount of information about the Earth that's encoded into the Great Pyramid, you can't just dismiss all of this as okay. pure coincidence. We just looked at all the um, mathematics and uh, Earth things um, encoded into the pyramid. Okay, I think I'm getting somebody on my side. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm turning them. All right, to play devil's advocate. Okay. Here, I I would love it if aliens came and gave us all that. But here is here's where I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to take right. a detour. Here's here's what I think. Uh, people had a lot of free time right. back then, and uh, they looked at the they looked at the s the stars a lot, right? And I think they were just bored. Even and with that, just I at think the time, the Earth wasn't circumnavigated where they would know all of that information, right? They didn't know how big the earth was at the time because there was no way to pull back and kind of, you know what I mean? Like it I do. I do, that's okay. I'm not What I'm what I'm doing here, okay. Kenny, is I am I'm giving myself an <laughs> out so that I can sleep well at night. <laughs> because I didn't know all that. Man, and it, I have no explanation. Th yeah, I just can't wait because I know you. So I know when I leave, you're going to look deeper into it because there are. I'm going to be up till like 3 a.m. watching are, this. There show. are other like what I said about from the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Like it's un. I don't understand it and get it. I get it because one of the things that I try to do at the time was say, you know what, people just 
found numbers that fit and wherever they fit or whether wherever it lined up oh then this is this this is this but like with the speed of light that's so many numbers Mm -hmm. to hit like nine numbers in a row like we were talking earlier about the guys that um quantify and come up with uh the possibilities or the the yeah yeah, yeah. how many people it would take yeah for, like yeah. come up with the the probability of something happening what is the probability of that matching up that, that's and not then good the everything else that matches up i gotta say that would be like guessing the first nine digits of pi there you go and i even know what i know what the first two digits are i don't remember anything I remember it, yeah. it'd be it'd be a crapshoot just yeah. to, it, and the, the and that would be me knowing that I'm trying to guess numbers of pi right these would just be totally random numbers right it'd but be, there, it's not like you're just saying like oh that's the distance from uh the Sahara Desert yeah. to the Nile River it's it, very, no, it's, it's yeah. numbers that mean something to the earth like important numbers you know and it's I don't know. It's it's weird enough for me to say, was there something there? <laughs> Is there something there? I, and I would love it if it was true. Now here here here's where here's where I'll go okay. from this. All right. I I do think that uh, civilizations, ancient civilizations, were a lot more advanced than we understand. Okay. Um, but to, to to begin to even theorize or hypothesize how they had that level of understanding of the world and mathematics, I couldn't even begin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, other than I will say that humans today are very, very smart. Like it blows my mind how like this whole room right here is filled with so much technology. Yeah. Like there is a lot of technology just in these microphones. Right. I've, I used to work for my uncle used to own a TV repair shop. I've seen all this shit taken apart and put back together. I understand technically how it works, like, or theoretically, I don't understand how it works. Right. I don't understand how we figured it out. I don't understand any of, I don't, I don't understand how we figured any of this out or how we got here. Right. And I, I do believe that human beings thousands of years ago were equally as capable of doing this shit as we are today, except instead of dealing with transistors, resistors, current and everything, I think they were able to do that with, the natural world in a way that we Speaking can't comprehend. Of transistors. Did you see how the pyramids resemble a microchip? Yes, I did see that. You showed me that actually. I um, did. Yes. Okay. So it's and it yeah, blew my I mind. I forgot about that part. Yeah. It's because as soon as I said that, I was like, yeah, the, fu- yeah. the fucking city looks like a yeah circuit board. Exactly. Just I don't know, man. Now I do think I do think that the human brain is. Mm, I do think we tend to see patterns. Yeah, where we look for not, faces. Yeah. That yeah, that whole thing. But the fact that, you know, the other thing too is I always question stuff like that on the internet like is that really a circuit board or microchip that like actually looks like that or do they just like design it to look like the thing? I don't know. Okay. I've no I always devils that always skeptical devils gotcha. advocate. Hey, I get it. I'm the same way. It's just it, to me it seems like it's over. But no, this is what it this is what's fun about it though. Okay. Because you can look at something like that and be like, holy shit, that is a yeah, that is a giant circuit. It board. makes me feel good. Inside. It does, right? <laughs> yeah. And oh, and that's another that is another part of conspiracy theory psychology okay. or the study is that when you come to those conclusions and yeah. you've done all that work, yeah. The 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 eventuality that you come to, the the the, the aha moment the aha moment yeah it feels really good yeah not only to like come to a conclusion but to feel like you now have the understanding that you feel was being withheld from you oh yeah and, yeah yeah and now that you have it what's your goal now to tell other people about it yeah. to further the theory right so no i totally that that's what's so intoxicating and fun about conspiracy theories Heck yeah yeah so all right so we did one that we believe is true, one that we can't believe others believe, ones that we want to be true. Ooh, and your favorite. Well, you didn't. You told me one that you want to be true, but you didn't delve into why. You said you wanted to. You wish that the aliens. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah. Tell me. Oh, okay. Well, so I don't have. I'll just tell. All right. Here's the best way. You, are you familiar with the writer Hunter S. Thompson? I am. All right. Rolling Stone. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh huh. 
Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, yeah. Fear and Loathing on the campaign trail, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Uh, he was batshit crazy. He was. But he was. He was a man of, like, I loved, like, I haven't read a lot of his stuff, but I saw the Johnny Depp movies, mm-hmm. and I'm fascinated by him. I'd have to go look at the, find the quote, but to to paraphrase, he said, things never got weird enough for me. I think it was the time that I completely changed my life and started on where I am now, five years, when I got sober and all that stuff. I kind of adopted this, the same mentality, like, things aren't weird enough, we need to get weirder. For one thing... People are way more interesting when you talk about weird, like conspiracy theories, right? Like, yeah. it's more fun being really open and honest with someone and getting like, does that make? Does this make sense? It's yeah, more fun I'll to get, follow it. It's Go. more fun to get dirty in life and like get weird with shit. Like, yeah, let instead of keeping everything bottled up, let's talk about everything that's like with deep within our soul and make people feel uncomfortable. Like, yeah. I am like I am very human. I'm going to show you my humanity. That's really weird. And so that's kind of a tangent, but I feel like the the earth, the world, the people, the civilizations, this could all get a whole lot weirder. And the best way for that to happen would be fucking aliens. That'd be so fucking weird. Yeah. I would love our entire lives would change. Do you think it would unite people? I don't think so actually. Oh. Okay. I don't think it would drive us apart. Okay. But I also don't think it would uh, unite us either. I think it would change a lot of our focus. Okay. Because now all of a sudden we have an additional, like an, an entirely new factor to deal with. Um, and so that changes how politics plays out. It changes how geopolitics would play out. It changes now all of a sudden, like, it, I mean, it really would change. Because now you have, if you, if there was the possibility of these flying spacecraft now we're now we would have and they became known to us yeah now we have to deal with sharing airspace with people from not this planet the super bowl seems far less important exactly you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like well that's kind of why i thought uh, my first thought was maybe it would unite people because nothing i don't think would unite us more than the fear of all of us dying you know, and if a alien, if an alien or an, another species could make it to the Earth, then maybe they could take over the Earth. See, I disagree because okay. we are faced with existential threats day in and day out, and people don't believe it. Ooh, nuclear nuclear war. A lot of people aren't afraid of that, and a lot of people should be a lot more afraid of that. Climate change, a lot of people are not afraid of that. Ooh. People, A lot of people think it's fake. This episode, I did not want to go uh, left or right with politics, so I won't go left or right with politics. But I will say, like, just look at how divided we are on basically anything, right? Yeah. And I still think that if we had aliens come down, yeah, we would still have people who refuse to believe in them, and we would still have... And we would also have people who think we should turn over the entire world to them. Be like, oh, yeah, there are new, there are new overlords, or there are new gods. And then you have people who just don't care. Like, oh yeah, we have yeah. aliens now. Great. I think with most Earth issues, I'm doing air quotes by the way. <laughs> I think that the reason there's a divide on Earth is because there are people on different sides of the coin that have a dog in the fight, right? Whereas with aliens. Who, who can really say, I'm sure there'll be somebody that says I'm with the aliens. But if the aliens are just, if they're here to eliminate everybody, then <laughs> I don't know. Just maybe, maybe. I oh. still I still think people are dumb enough <laughs> where if they were. Yeah. And this, yeah. I, I just, I told you a little bit ago that, you know, I. Um, I love when you do that. I know. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> Trying to really choose my words carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you never know who's listening. <laughs> gotcha. I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. I won't be PC about it. Uh, I do think that we have some people who are so against, um, say, violence or military action of any kind or have a pacifist uh, perspective. There you go. Um, that you would still, still even in the face of complete and utter annihilation, people who would still take a stand against any sort of military action or offensive action or, you know, whatever. Okay. I think, yeah, I think I see your point. 
because I could definitely see people saying, oh, this is God's will. Let it be done. Save so, the alien yeah. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I got you. Like we should. We like should, their life is more important than ours. Yeah. Like yeah. we should practice internet or intergalactic diplomacy. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, listen, I don't want to, I don't want to. I don't want a world war any any more than I want a civil war. However, an intergalactic war, <laughs> yeah, be be kind of cool with it. That's why we have especially the fucking, if they got laser guns. That's well, why that's why we have the fucking space force. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing that I think Trump did. Yeah, the space force <laughs> made the space force. That's right. He didn't do it for no reason. <laughs> hey, there's a conspiracy. <laughs> I'll see what you did there. <laughs> Uh, no, I, 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 but I think that's true. I th- honestly, I think that's true of anything. I don't think you could get a hundred percent support for anything on earth. Okay. And all right. You were making a reference to Steph Curry. Yeah. A, f- a little while ago. Honest the to chef. God. Honest Sh- to God. I thought you were talking about football. Jesus, Joseph. I'm sorry. I've just never been a sports person. Okay. And at this point in my life, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of my thing. Yeah. Like I just straight up, I am happily ignorant of all sports. Okay. Almost like to an obstinate degree. Like, please yeah. don't tell me anything about sports. Yeah. I want to die knowing as little about sports as possible. Yeah. You have to really not be paying attention to not know about sports in America because it's Ex- everywhere. Exactly. Our sports stars are not just sports stars. They're everywhere, you know? Uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, So there would be dumbasses like me. Yeah. Who, when the aliens come, they'd be like, it's fine. (laughs) Or uh, don't tell me they're alien. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to go to work. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Which which is kind of how it feels now because there's been so many UFO revelations and hearings and stuff. And everyone's like, so they're they're aliens, but we're just going to like go to work Monday. Yeah, Yeah, we are. Yeah. Because they're not here. For sure. They have not blown up the White House or the Capitol building. So, yep, we're still going. Mm. Uh, now, I will say this. If the aliens were anything like the aliens in Independence Day. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world better be behind defending the planet against that shit. Right. If anybody defends those fuckers, absolutely not. Yeah. They were they were the worst. Now, if it was E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Did we save them? Yeah. We'd go get our bikes with the basket on the front. You better listen. Take him home. You better believe if I discovered an alien in my fucking backyard, that fucker's living with me. Yeah. I mean, I got this fucking thing. This thing wandered out in the middle of the street and I just picked her up. <laughs> is that is that how you got that? That's the how dog? I got the yeah. I was actually the, my first construction job, walking down our construction road, and here comes this fat turd yeah. waddling up the street. She's all covered in mud. And uh I took her home and fed her and i took her back the next day i was gonna like you know let her go yeah. and she wandered around I, I just let her out of the car and she like disappeared and eight hours later when it was time to go home she reappeared at the car and it was funny because she's a beagle and so she just will track for hours you know yeah and so i just let her go and uh i saw her little tail like up on this uh ridge of rocks and you just saw that little white tail like a little flag like all day just like walking around smelling the ground mm, but i mean like way far away yeah 200 yards away you could just see the little and then yeah she came back when it was time to go home and your thought was i'm taking her home yep i was like this is my dog now i love how white you are (laughs) i do i swear i love how white you are joseph it's so endearing she came and she laid down next to the car. I'm not saying it's wrong. I love it. It's great. It's it's actually <laughs> great. I'm telling you, I'm not being f- like funny or facetious. It's Listen, great. Okay. All right. So now that we're on this topic, okay. Okay. Um, there's a, a guy on Instagram, or uh, this is a different man. All he does is talk about white women and animals. Okay. He's like, I'm telling y'all, if there's an animal, if there is a animal, go get a white woman. <laughs> if you're missing a dog, go find a white woman. Yeah. For oh, sure. Only a white woman. For sure. Uh, oh, okay. I'll tell you a couple of stories. We're going to go off on a tangent and then okay. we'll get back to conspiracy theories. A uh, few months ago mm-hmm. in the car with wife and kid yeah, and we're over mm, somewhere by the mall or something uh, or Kroger. We're over by Kroger and we see um, a dog running down the side street. No collar or anything. Just run. And there's like a whole bunch of traffic. Yeah. And my wife and daughter were both like, we have to get that dog. Yeah. And I was like, there's like traffic. Yeah, we have to get the dog. I'm like, all right, fine. 
So I pull off to the side of the, I pull into a driveway to turn around. There's already two other cars in there turning around. Yep. Both white women. Oh yeah, for sure. So the three of us turn around and we start tracking this dog and we track it down to a main street and we kind of lose it and we wind up across the street. Did y'all like form a team? Like you, okay, okay. And so we're on one side of this busy street yeah. at a Kroger and then there's a bank on the other side of the street, four lanes, you know, with a turn lane in the middle. And this dog comes out into the road. Yeah. And I hear my wife yelling, but I parked the car like over here, but I hear the voice coming from over here. She is already at the road. I'm yeah. out of the car like trying and she's already at the road and they've like and the dog runs off back into the parking lot. And then there's a car in the bank parking lot and the lady out there starts following the dog again yeah and my wife and daughter are like all right we got to go get and there's like all this traffic and i'm like guys it's okay there's already a white woman on it <laughs> she's gonna get it i promise <laughs> I'm like you're you're not I was like, and i even t- i said that a couple of times and then my wife says yeah but i want to be the white lady that gets the dog yep i be- i listen Anytime I see, you know, you're you're in a neighborhood, mm-hmm. somebody's lost a dog, and mm-hmm. they got a poster up saying, you know, find Sparky or whatever is mm-hmm. Rusty, whatever his name is. It may as well say on the the top on the heading, um, all white people. This is my dog. Bring it here, but like <laughs> because it's it's like a calling card to uh-huh. white folks. Because that's the only people respond. If if somebody knocks on your door to bring your dog back, they're going to be white. Yeah. They are going to be white. That's all I got to say. But, and it's not a bad thing. It's just, that's, that's yeah. Statistically, they're going to be white. <laughs> Black people, is not, they, they're not going to find your dog, first of all. <laughs> and if they do find your dog, they want your dog. <laughs> they're going to keep your dog. They ain't bringing your dog back. Uh. So we've had um, a lot of animals uh, in our care, and yeah. the first, the very first one, its name was Mouse Rat, and it was a because uh, we <laughs> didn't a know bad band. We, we didn't know. It. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> from uh, it's from uh, Parks and Parks Rec. And Rec. Yep, because uh, we didn't know if it was a mouse or a rat because it was like the size of like a knuckle. And it was pink and it was just on the like ground in the parking lot. What? And my wife was like, oh, we have to save this thing. And I was like, OK. So we try to feed it like formula for animals. You know, we keep it alive for like two or three days. Yeah. And it finally just dies. So that was our first like, right, oh, mouse no. rat. And then we got birds, squirrels. Sorry, mouse rat. My wife will just my, my wife went out to the country to like help rescue a fox that was stuck in like a culvert. My wife doesn't know anything about foxes. <laughs> she was like, it's just like a dog yeah. or a cat. It's fine. I get yeah. it. Why would, yeah. Like, we used to keep a uh, wild animal kit in the back of the car. No way. Yep. Joseph, no. Nope, this app? No, no. You are <laughs> not going to do that. You are not going to be sitting here telling me stories <laughs> and not telling me the truth. There's no way you kept a wild animal kit in the back of your car. Yeah, my wife that had so funny. she was like, "All right, we need uh you need gloves, you need towels, <laughs> you need a box. You always have to have a cardboard box." Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then some kind of like water or something, you know, and then obviously like a, a, a hand sanitizer stuff like that. Yeah. And then something to you know, catch them in and stuff like that. So yeah, wow. we had a box. Now, all right, I'll tell you, we had an adventure a couple okay. weeks ago. We had a fucking bat in here. A bat what? came in. Yes. Yeah. The door got open. Bat came in. Uh, wife comes down, and sh- I just hear her yell. And she's like, "There's a fucking bird in the house, <laughs> or it's a bat." And I was like, "Bats? Yeah, I love bats. Okay. okay, I love bats. Okay, I am not afraid of bats." Okay. I am, however, afraid of rabies. Ooh. I am terrified of rabies. I am too. If bats did not carry rabies, I would. Oh, I would have no problem going into a cave full of bats. Yeah. I love bats. Yeah. And so when she said that, I was like, "Everybody, get the fuck upstairs. Close your doors." And she was like, "You can't even let them touch you." And I was like, "I know. I know. All, I know all about fucking rabies. Don't <laughs> you talk to me about rabies?" I was like, "I'm gonna get this bat out of here. It's gonna be fine." Listen. The bat perched right up there in the corner, right there. Okay, yeah. Pointing at it. And to get a bat out of the house, you have to turn off 
all the lights because oh. the light fucks with their eyes. Yeah. And then you have to open as many doors and windows as you can because they'll they'll fly and they will do their echolocation until they, you know, home, home they, in on, yeah, you know, they see an opening. This door is wide open. The door in the back is wide open. Windows wide open. Lights are out. But the bat is perched right up there. Okay? Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I got to get this fucker out of here. So I go and I get some tennis balls and I start tossing them up at it. Oh. And finally I get it close and it moves. It like starts flying. But I don't realize it at first because, Kenny, how quiet do you think bats are? I never thought about it. But now that you say that, can you hear the noise that they use to echolocate? Or is that not audible you, to you, human you ears? You cannot hear it. Then I would, I would guess that they're deathly quiet. They are silent. There is no noise. There, really? There is no noise from the wings. They don't flap. They don't squeak. Nothing. They, they so don't you can't hear you cannot you don't hear the wind moving around them or anything this bat was making laps around this living room i mean like and it was so dark that you just thought he was still perched up you're still throwing tennis balls at the corner no no no. oh it, no no it was i i knew because i saw a shadow that move and i was okay. like all right i got it moving but i wasn't sure that it was still flying i thought maybe it had just like swooped down and gone back up yeah and so but all these lights out here were shining through the window and it was dark and the only reason I knew it was still flying is because there was a shadow or a light cast right here on these doors. Yeah. And about every two seconds, like just oh a little, just a little God. shadow. And it looked like fucking Batman. It was awesome. But yeah, it was making a circle around here. It made like dozens of laps yeah. just in silence. And yeah. every, every lap, Batman, Batman, it's like splashed against the light. It was so fucking cool. That is awesome. The coolest thing though was watching it get to the window be, or get to the door because it would get closer and closer each lap because you could tell he was homing in on it. Yeah. And finally, when he was confident, he just whoosh, right out, gone. It was awesome. Now, do you want to know what my dumbass was doing? What? I was, <laughs> oh, I was standing, standing in the dining room. <laughs> yeah. And I had a tennis racket over my face. <laughs> 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 just in, on the off chance that, that it come came down after. the hall. <laughs> <laughs> One. I didn't want it to hit my face yeah. and get rabies in my face. Yeah. But yeah. also, worst case scenario, I got to smack the... You know what? No. You see, that right there, that blind confidence, that's another, <laughs> another thing that makes you white. You have no... You don't even want to know about sports, yet you think you're going to hit a fucking bat out of the air. No. With a tennis racket. No. You're insane. I did not think I was ever going to hit it. Oh, okay. You, okay. I, you I, thought he was going to hit you. I knew <laughs> the moment I grabbed that tennis racket <laughs> that the only thing it was good for was covering my face. <laughs> I, okay. I justified grabbing it and looking like an idiot <laughs> by saying, oh, I can hit it with this. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> they are they are fast and yeah. they are dark and they are quiet. You they have no idea where it is. They are agile as hell, yes. too. Yes. Yeah. There was no way in hell I was getting close to it. Okay. Because okay. I was about to say, I'm like, okay, Joseph. So here, but here's here's what's crazy about bats. And I, I've i known this. I've known it. I love bats. I've read, I, When I was a kid, I was obsessed with bats. They are so, so, so tiny. Yeah. But when they spread their wings, they are enormous. So how f how big was that wingspan? It it was easily a foot. But the little bat hang perched on the um trim up trim yeah. up there was maybe 3 inches tall. Damn. But when it flew, I mean its wings pff, foot foot apart easily, tip to tip. 12 big. foot. No, 12 inch. Oh, Sorry. 12 inch, but yeah, 12 inch. I wish I had a fucking a pterodactyl inch, in here. That'd be cool. That is amazing, though. Good it was thing. awesome. Um, all right. That was a huge long tan tangent, but yes, we are white. <sighs> very, very. <laughs> and I love it. Oh, and I came up with a joke, too. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Let's hear it. Racists against white people. All of my best friends are white. <laughs> <laughs> As I fist bump Joseph. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I was really proud of that when I came up with it. That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, all right. So where where are we on the conspiracy theory countdown? Okay. So we've got theories that we believe. Yep. Theories that we can't believe others believe. And Th theories that we wish were true. Oh, and now conspiracy theories that are true or that we know are true Ooh, okay you want to go first on this one sure 
Okay, let's hear it. All right. So the conspiracy theories that we know are true or the ones that have become true are actually, I think, what would best fit the definition of a conspiracy theory that just exists, but then come to find out, oh, actually all that shit that we thought that we were just crazy about, no, it was real. Like the things that I, basically every single time that the U.S. government has cooed a foreign government, Okay. Y- you name it. Basically every South American country ever. Go ahead. Everywhere that we've everywhere that we've gone and, and done a coup, the okay. CIA has gone in and done some sort of actual psyop campaign. Mm-hmm. Uh we've been involved in assassinations. Yep. Um providing weapons to guerrilla fighter. I mean shit, the whole Vietnam War. Iran Iran, Iran Contra. Yep. Yep. Uh er- everything that those things that read like conspiracies, like so many people have to be in on it, right? Like it would be crazy. You couldn't keep it a secret. Yeah. All that stuff was declassified and it turns out, yep, it was act- the, those theories were actually true. Yeah. Um, so th- those we know are true. And there, oh, I th- was it, were, were you and I talking about Agent Orange? Yes. That was another one because I believe for a while they denied the existence of Agent Orange. They did for a long time. And then they also denied the existence of the MK Ultra program, which when you when you read about MK Ultra sounds fucking crazy. It sounds yeah. like something that you would come up with like in a fever dream. Yeah. Like if you drank too much cough syrup, you'd be like, Oh, the government is giving people drugs and trying to control their brain. No, they actually were trying yeah. to do that. They were working on mind control. Yeah. It didn't work, by the way. Ugh, they yeah. did fuck up some people. Ted Bad. Kaczynski. Bad. Um so those are the ones that we know are that we know are true. The, my favorite one well, not my favorite, but I think the one that's most interesting. Um, I, Iran is a tragic one, I think, because I, Iran, the the fall of Iran, the overthrow of um, uh, Mohammed Mossadegh, and the reinstallation of the Shah, who was a complete fucking maniac, I, that set the Middle East on a trajectory that, like, they're still on today. Like the fall of Iran. Well, you you can. Everything that's happening in the Middle East now, you can line up with the fall of Iran. Yeah, but that also co- it also fucked America up mm-hmm. too, because of the the drugs. Is that is that what you're talking about? No, Iran Contra came uh, later in the eighties, seventies, eighties. Okay, so um, the fall of Iran was this what? was because I don't know about this. This was in the 1950s. Oh, okay. You had uh, basically a royal family ruling Iran. And they had a democratic election. They elected, uh, he was a professor. His name was Mohammed Mossadegh. He had social programs, uh, wanted to improve literacy and economics and all that. And uh, the CIA did not like him for these reasons uh, because Iran had oil. And he was going to nationalize the oil supply, which meant that Great Britain and the United States would no longer have access to their super cheap oil. Right. So now and, they would have to bid like everybody else. Yep. Or okay. And so what happened was the CIA basically set up this coup to overthrow Mossadegh and they reinstalled the Shah, the Shah of Iran, whose father had been Shah before, something like that. And so, but part of that was they entered into a 20 or 30 year agreement, oil agreement with the Shah. So the U.S. would have preferred oil pricing for so f- so long, and Iran would basically only get like ten cents a barrel uh, for the oil that they got that and they sold. This is they did they were able to do this because the Shah was voted out of power, and they will we'll give you this power back, but you got to give us. Yep. But if the Shah was that powerful, how could he? The, he, he needed the military. And the military wouldn't be on his side mm-hmm. because they, yep. okay, gotcha. So they basically soured the Iranian people against Mossadegh. Mossadegh resigned, um, and then the Shah was installed. Oh, they didn't go in and kill Mossadegh. Mm-mm. They just he, he, tarnished his image. And then he resigned, and he lived in exile. That's the one thing America's good at is PR. Yep. Either way, they want it to go, but yep. go ahead. Um, so... Basically, what happened after that was uh, 30, 30 years or something of uh, us buying oil from Iran. And then at the end, um, Henry Kissinger was kind of crucial in shifting our oil interests from Iran to Saudi Arabia, which is why we're so tight with Saudi Arabia today. Now, it just so happens that at the end of 
that uh, contract that we had with Iran, um, they, the oil companies have been doing a lot of uh, geological surveying, and they discovered that Iran had maybe 10 years of like solid oil drilling left, whereas Saudi Arabia had something like 200 years worth of oil reserves. And so all of a sudden, the United States didn't give a shit if Iran had oil or not, if I, you know, they didn't want to renew their contract with Iran. So they basically just said, fuck Iran and fuck the Shah. We're going with Saudi Arabia. So we've been, we basically kicked Iran to the curb in preference of Saudi Arabia ever since. So that is a conspiracy that that fucking happened. Like okay. that, all that shit happened. But my favorite or the worst would be Guatemala, um, where basically the entire country was run by uh, the United Fruit Company. Uh, an American company. Yeah. This is a, I, I won't go into the whole story, but United Fruit Company was basically a banana company. Okay. Okay. It, it then became Dole, I believe. But United Fruit was a company up until like the 70s or 80s, and then it got sold, whatever. Uh, United Fruit owned something like 70% of all the arable land in Guatemala. And the thing about that is a, only a small fraction of all that land was actually being farmed. So equi- uh, Guatemalans couldn't, like local Guatemalans couldn't farm their own land because it was held privately by United Fruit. So basically in order for anybody to get any work, they had to work for United Fruit harvesting bananas. And General Electric owned the power supply and United Fruit owned the railroads so you basically, this is what's meant by a banana republic. The fruit uh, company itself was so big and powerful and the land was so cheap, they had gone and purchased basically all of the land and they were basically de facto in charge of the country. Like wow. You, like corporate, con- yeah. So uh, I, I, I did a whole episode or a whole chapter uh, on this and so I, I cannot remember... It's been so long, I can't remember the names. I know Jacobo Arbenz was one, and I can't remember who. Anyway, there was a Democrat, democratically elected president, and his his whole platform was education for the masses, voting rights, mandatory voting, uh, anonymous voting for, you know, all this stuff. Um, again, uh, uh, no more pr- uh, basically public land, you know, uh, no more private land that farmland would now be public you could they would then lease out the land to farmers they basically took all that um privately owned land and the state then took it from united fruit to redistribute to the guatemalan so they could farm it so they're they're doing all of this and the dulles brothers john uh alan dulles and john dulles the dulles airport guys cia yeah. cia yeah yeah, yeah yeah cia and fbi goons in something uh, department of defense or something like that I, f- I feel really bad because I don't remember nearly as much as I wish I could from these scripts. But anyway, so the Dulles brothers were, they basically had connections with United Fruit. Okay. okay. One of them worked at the law firm that represented United Fruit. Okay. And they're like, well, this is not good for business. This new president is like fucking our shit up down here. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no worries. We work for the CIA or we work for the US, US government. We can get you weapons and we can do. PR and psyops and we can uh, really fuck some shit up. Yeah. So they printed a bunch of flyers and they dropped all these flyers all over Guatemala talking about how the new president was a communist. He wasn't a communist. <laughs> like and then uh they sent all these leaflets out saying that if, you know, the communist president didn't give up whatever they were going to start dropping bombs and shit. And they did. They came in uh one night and they did an air raid and they hit the the governor's palace or governor's mansion or something uh they injured like some children with their bombs and shit and basically it got so they terrorized the people of guatemala so much that they forced the president to resign all because of bananas and that is one of those things like not just been they also had coffee there but you know bananas banana we eat the fuck i have a bowl of bananas in my bananas yeah it's silly it's a fruit yeah we don't need bananas right we don't right it's a luxury right built on basically blood and sweat that is insane and essentially forced labor i mean guatemala is like one of those it's so fucking stupid because bananas like i can't there is no scenario on this earth in which any anything is worth bananas 
nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got but you. But we did a whole psyop campaign, bombed an entire city, injured children, like framed communist. Here's what's fucking crazy. Okay, they hired um, they hired a guy, uh, a, a retired uh, U.S. Army general or major or something, to train Nicaraguan soldiers to act as guerrillas, and then they planted a bunch of Russian weapons on one of the trains that was owned by United Fruit sent it into the country, sent the weapons into the country on the United Fruit train and said, oh, they're smuggling Russian weapons into the thing. Like, Had people scared that they were communists. Uh-huh. Yep. And, yep. and <sighs> so anyway, we did that all for bananas. And that so that's one of those conspiracy theories that uh, is true. Yeah. That uh, there's actually, there are entire books written about all the CIA coups and government operations that yeah. were re- that have been declassified and there are so many that it is this goes back to sort of when we very first started this episode and we were talking about um looking at the patterns right yes there's a difference between like looking and not having all the information and coming up with your theory on why it's that way and then there's an uh the very real fact of looking at an established pattern and it is not a conspiracy theory to say that the cia is actively engaged in trying to control global events through psychological warfare, actual warfare, overthrowing governments. Like that's not a conspiracy theory. That is a hundred percent true. That part of our government is basically a free agent. And I don't think that's a conspiracy theory at all. Yeah. So that I'll say is true. Do you have one? <laughs> that was a lot. Wow. Sorry. That was, that was a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Now I'm, bef- I'm going to get into one that is true. But I first want to ask you a question because I heard a name in your last, uh, in your most recent conspiracy that you said earlier. And I want to see, am I mistaken or was this the same name? In this last one, we're talking about bananas, you said the name Henry Kissinger. Is that the same name that yep. you said for yep. JFK? Mm-hmm. So who the Okay, that, so this guy is really Hit, important mm. for conspiracies, I guess. He, he or no, this last one wasn't a conspiracy. Mm-mm. He did it. They did it. Yeah. So Henry Kissinger was a fascinating man. He died this year or last year. He was a hundred years old, yeah. which meant he was born in twenty three, um, and he was a, a German Jew. And he immigrated to the United States, fleeing Nazi Germany. And he went to Harvard, I think. And he became basically um, a U.S. statesman. And he served as advisors for Jesus. Presidents from Eisenhower up to Bush Sr., I think. And even, I mean, he even... You basically go through any decade in American politics since 1950s. And Henry Kissinger is somewhere doing something fucked up. He is responsible for the massive bombing campaign in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, which is arguably one of the worst legacies that any statesperson could have left on this world. Cambodia is still fucked up, thanks to Henry Kissinger. He There is a really good four-part series on the podcast Behind the Bastards that looks into Henry Kissinger. I recommend everybody listen to that one. But what you need to know about Kissinger in Cambodia is he he was not an expert on war or any... He just basically was the whole time experimenting with geopolitics. Why did he have so much influence? Did he have a lot of money? No. He was just an advisor. Yeah. And how he got to that position, I think, is sort of... Th- there is just a weasel, I guess. Yeah. yeah. There's an interesting origin story where somebody like, basically just asked him to do something, and he found himself in this position where he could work his way up, and he just kind of weaseled his way yeah. up and up. All the powerful people need a weasel. Yeah. And they need somebody to do the dirty work. The, the fucked up thing about Cambodia is that he created this... Um, the op- the the military operation that he came up with was called Operation Menu. Okay. As in, you go to a restaurant and get a menu. Yeah. And that's how he 
uh, described, or that's how he offered all of the actual S- services. Or yeah, so okay. there was breakfast, lunch, dinner, and Get the fuck out of mm-hmm. here. And so oh, he's a demented fuck. Yeah, and so the the idea was that the president would literally choose an item from the menu and yeah. know exactly what he was going to get. Right now, none of this was like. None of this was based on any kind of war theory, game theory, political theory, nothing. It was just Kissinger thought, oh, Dreaming if, up if, shit. if we drop 2,000 tons of bombs a day, yeah, call it breakfast, that'll be the start of the campaign. And then you can order dessert if you want, and we'll bomb this shit at this rate. And that's uh, how he offered it up. And that was like, that's his contribution. And then he, somehow Kissinger became to like the political elite as basically like, well, we don't know what to do. Get Kissinger. Ask what's Kissinger's opinion. Kissinger believed in, um, he believed there was a real promise in using tactical nuclear weapons in not war, but like in the small stuff. Like he wanted to use nukes in Vietnam, like small tactical nukes. Luckily, no president ever agreed to go along with this, but he was a huge proponent of using nuclear weapons in these smaller conflicts. Well, it's going to be a small one, so it's not going to. That's right. It's not like Hiroshima. No, not that's Hiroshima was too big. Yeah, we know yeah. it too big. It now we want just a little, just a little, just a little bit. Just <laughs> give us a little atomic blast yeah, right here. <laughs> I want to see just a you know, little tiny baby mushrooms all over Vietnam. Right there. I should laugh at that. When you're looking, so funny. When you're, oh my god. When you're, <laughs> when you're looking, when you're looking down yeah. from the space station, you yeah. should be like, oh, look at all those little button caps, just little baby popping up. Boop, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, Henry Kissinger was an asshole, and uh, it's funny when he died. There, were a lot of people, a lot of people on the left were like, oh, thank God he's dead, and everybody else was like, hey, you know, he had a family, and uh, you know, people loved him, and you know, you should never celebrate that someone's dead. Fuck that. Yeah. I mean, fuck that. Yeah. That I, guy fucking sucked. Yeah. He had a he had a he century. Sounds, he's, he sounds like a horrible yeah. person. His, his reward on this earth was living to be a hundred. He can go fuck himself. Yeah. I mean, con- you congratulations. You got your yeah. Fuck you, Henry Kissinger. <laughs> And honest to God, his family knows he sucks. Yeah, there is no way. Oh like, no! I like he, I could, he may have been the best father and the best love, most loving husband ever. They know he fucking sucks. Yeah, They're like yeah, my dad was real great, but ugh, Cambodia. What if he was like sick enough to where that just became his shtick in life? Like when he gave his son choices, he says, "You want <laughs> breakfast, lunch, or dinner?" <laughs> and, <laughs> made him pick between three like <laughs> it's getting more horrible choices you know what i mean like I, okay i digress i caught you sneaking out past curfew yeah what you want breakfast lunch or dinner good grief yeah. all right so <laughs> one that is not a conspiracy that's what i'm that's what yeah. I'm naming something that just is true or uh or, a conspiracy. Uh, what was once a conspiracy that it, that was re- that has since been proven to be real. Oh, okay, gotcha. But however you want to take it, the CIA had Martin Luther King killed. Hell yeah, I'm I'm asking because I mean maybe I should know more about this because so much has been declassified. But I do remember at one point reading that they like it was known that. They were following him around. They knew of all the things that he did that, that, like, most people didn't know, like the cheating and the this, the that, drug use. Um, Was it ever proven that they had him killed? It Mm -hmm. wasn't. Okay. So then, no, that's no good then. Let's see. Uh, Right there. The government is spying on you. Let me just say this one. Uh, 9-11, just so they could pass the laws for, like, the NSA and the yep. homeless security, all of that stuff. Is that let's let's spend a minute talking about nine eleven real okay. quick? Because here here here's the thing. Okay, <clears throat> I do not believe that rockets hit. I do not believe that ballistic missiles hit the World Trade Center or even the Pentagon. I admit that the Pentagon explosion looks weird, but what we're not even at whatever. I will go with. We had four airplanes crash 
two into the um, World Trade Center, one into the Pentagon, and one into that field in Pennsylvania. Four airplanes. I do think that it's not so much a conspiracy of government uh, to uh, to enact uh, strict surveillance measures. Yes. I do think that they took advantage of the situation, and also I do believe that they that the government did not act on information that they had to prevent 9-11. Okay. I, I think it was more from incompetence than from malice. Okay. And that is just as valid a conspiracy, true conspiracy, as if we were to discover that they were actually missiles that hit the towers. Yeah. Because having a government, ha- having a nation like the United States with such superior everything... Yeah, infrastructure, military, surveillance, at, even at the time, 2001, by far surpassed any other country in the world. For us to have had, because we, you know, they had that document, Osama bin Laden plans domestic terror attack, whatever, that was ignored by the Bush administration, and then it happened. Right, a lot of people dropped the dropped the ball on that. Right, and it happened. You could you argue that they let it happen intentionally? I don't think so. Did they let it happen because they were incompetent or complacent or whatever? Absolutely. Or arrogant. Or arrogant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And after that, I think we were already on the on the track to be a surveillance state before then. Um, beca- I mean, we since the Cold War, I mean, we've been perfecting our spying and wiretapping and all that shit. And but something drastic has to happen to get the okay to spy yeah. on Americans in America. Yep. Where you could go with conspiracy theory here is, you know, we did have an attempted bombing of the World Trade Center before in the basement. And we did have the bombing of the Oklahoma City Alfred P. Murrah building. We did have those things. Those didn't result in nearly the measures taken after 9-11. That is certainly where you could grow a conspiracy thing, saying that this was intentional. But I think it, I think it just coincides with where we were going already okay. and kind of like how to tie it all back when you had the wef world economic forum and davos calling the pandemic the great reset yeah again we are really bad at pr so 9 11 the u.s becomes a surveillance state i think we were going there anyway and 9 11 was just the perfect conduit to get us there okay i got you but yeah, I do think that 9-11 accelerated it. Yeah, for sure. Because not not I think. It did. 9-11 yes, did accelerate. for sure, for sure. Edward Snowden, who is a great American patriot, revealed all this to us yep. with the Snowden leaks. Yep. With the help of um, WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Yes. Um, Julian Assange. Now this, you, we could even go with Julian Assange as his... Um, Basically, his exile and arrest and all the international, the attempts to smear his name by international press, you could argue that that's a conspiracy theory that turned to be out, that turned out to be true. Okay. Because what was the first, what, what, what story do you remember about Julian Assange when? That he tried to rape a girl, but it, he didn't even have a girl in his room. And then when he left the embassy, do you remember how they describe the embassy in I forget which embassy. It yeah, was. they said he left fecal matter everywhere. His, yep. letting his dog or cat shit everywhere. It, they said he. It, they said it was his. He. Had oh, they said it was his. his. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. They said. Yeah. It was all kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. That would be based on what we know about the U.S. government. Yeah. Discrediting other people in other yeah. countries. Yeah. It is not far fetched to say that all the things that we heard about Julian Assange were done. Basically, so we wouldn't support him being a publisher of information. Right. To, so smear the guy, smear his behavior, yeah. paint him as crazy, paint him as a rapist or whatever, and no one will support him. No one will support right. the First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, if the guy who did it is a rapist. Well, that's not how those rights work. Right. I, so I don't think it's, yeah, I think Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, I think Edward Snowden revealed that, yes, the government is spying and the fallout of that is Edward Snowden no longer lives here and Julian Assange is facing like, I don't know, like a thousand life sentences if he's extradited back here. I mean, so yeah, that's a conspiracy that was proven true. Also, Man. I'm not the only one that when you're talking, just talking, 
and then later you're looking at your phone, all of a sudden you're looking at advertisements for shit you were talking about yep. that you've never typed into your fucking phone. Yep. I saw a guy do an experiment one time where he starts off the video by saying he does not own a cat. He's never owned a cat in his life. Uh, he doesn't like cats. Uh, he just had all of these things to set it up to, to let you know that cats are, are not a part of his life in any shape, any facet, any, any way. Well, he brings his phone into fo- uh, frame and then he says something about cat food. Just says it one time. Later in the day, a few hours later, he goes, oh, I really need to get that cat food again. Third time. So later on in the day. So he did it three times in one day. Oh, man. He asked his wife, did you pick up that cat food? She goes, huh? That was it. The very next day, there was a cat food ad on his phone. I already believed that because I have a perfect example. There was a, I was working at a place, a, a particular place. I was in a parking lot and in the parking lot, I saw something wriggling and writhing about and I get real close to it. I go, what the fuck is that? I had never seen an animal that looked like this. And I was a kid that liked playing in the dirt, loved picking up worms and putting them in my bucket and stuff, my little uh, toy bucket. So this worm looked different than anything I had ever saw because it had a head that the, so his body came up to his head and his head had a flat bottom part so it looked like a it looked like a half circle as his head and i had never seen that before and i was literally in my 30s so i go what the fuck what what is that and i take a picture of it on my phone the that very next week or part of, it may have been later in that week um i get a news ad on my phone because you know how your phone sends you news i get a news ad sent directly to my phone from newsweek or whatever it was some publication that said new uh new worm discovered in tennessee uh, it was like an invasive species but somehow it had gotten here and there have been sightings in tennessee and they sent that a picture of that worm to my phone and it blew my mind and when that happened I thought man what are the odds that I saw this worm and then now I'm reading that it's a uh, invasive species and we better watch out for it whenever you see one like if you can kill it I didn't believe I didn't believe that my phone was listening I just believed like it was a random coincidence and maybe it was just amazing that I happened upon it. But then after seeing that cat food guy, it confirmed the that what he said, the phone was listening. Yeah. And it, it has a device in it or whatever. It's got a, a program that recognizes speech patterns and acts accordingly, I yeah. guess, you know. So yeah, that yeah, that definitely blew my mind. Do you know the um the singer, the musician, Katie Lang. You ever heard of her? The white I've lesbian the lady. Na- I've heard the name. She She's a white lesbian lady who was popular in the 90s. She um, looks like androgynous. Yep. I, yeah. Okay, I do know what you're talking about. Um, my mother used to listen to her when I was a kid. Okay. So as a 30-something-year-old man, I probably had not listened to any of her music in probably about 30 years. Okay. Okay? <laughs> yeah. 25, 30 years, give yeah. or take, whatever. And out of nowhere, I remember uh, this song that she sang, Constant Craving. And like I just, I'm sitting, you know, zoned out. I, for some reason, I think of this song and I'm hearing it in my head. And I'm like, I tell my wife, I say, man, Katie Lang had an amazing voice. Yeah. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking like, my mom used to listen to her all the time, and I just remember she has such a beautiful voice, like she's so good. And that was it. That was, that was it. That was it. That's that was the whole it. conversation. Yep. Okay. I didn't get out my phone and listen to her. I didn't 
Look her up. Yeah. You didn't. Okay. My wife didn't either. She was like going to bed. She was watching TV and she just like rolled over and just ignored my comment. The next day, okay, we're going to bed again and she's on her computer and I think she's on Facebook. Yeah. And Facebook ads pop up. She was like, weren't you just talking about Katie Lang last night? And I was like, yeah, I was sitting here thinking about her song. And she was like, well, she's playing in Nashville. I was like, that is not a coincidence. Yeah, that's bizarre. Because we do not listen to that kind of music. Yeah. Like, we listen to a lot of music. Like, that's not us. We, we are not Melissa Etheridge or Lilith Fair people. What do you think? Do you think, oh, I love the convenience of it. I love that I can mention something in passing. Hell no. And then see it later on my phone. Hell no. Because maybe I forgot. Maybe I said this thing and I forgot. And I need to be reminded that I like the cat food. I need to get cat food. No, I don't think that's helpful at all. I think it's an invasion of yeah, privacy. Absolutely. But it's one of those things that we agree to. Yeah. All the fine print. Oh, yeah. You can't for really sure. complain about Every it. Every app that you download probably has it in there. It's creepy as shit. In terms shit. of agreement. Yeah. That, hey, we're listening. Now, we give that, we, we give that um, permission to those companies because, you know, we use their services. We do not give the government that permission the government just does whatever the fuck they want well the government which edward snowden told us about yeah i was gonna say the government the companies give the government the permission to mm -hmm. be able to uh be uh automatically downloaded on every phone yeah that's bought in america you yep. know what i mean uh, do, you, do you remember when um the government was telling us like nobody's spying on you and then Edward Snowden came out and was like, yeah, they are. Yeah. You're going to tell me you don't believe in any conspiracy yeah. theory? Yeah, Chelsea person. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yep. In the army. The vid one of the videos that she um, leaked, it was fucked up. Yeah, it was the uh, drone strikes, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah, she's the reason why we know about that shit. Yep. Also an American hero. Killing kids with that. Yeah, that's fucked up. Like an Xbox controller. In strip malls. Killed those Americans on the that rooftop and yep, yep. told us that they were Al-Qaeda or whoever. Yep. They were American journalists. Yeah. You yeah. think the American government's just batting a thousand? No. Absolutely not. I, I, say we close, I say we close this episode by saying um, we pledge absolute allegiance to the United States of America. I and, do. And, I love America. And all of its um, departments, like the CIA, the FBI, we could not live in a free nation without them. Um, we absolutely could not uh, live without the advancements made by the MK Ultra program. Um, we arguably the world would be a lot worse. Question mark. If Kennedy had lived, that would be bad. Um, I feel like, you know, if we had stopped 9 11, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't think that would have been good for us. I think things would have been a lot worse if 9 That's how we're going to end this. Life in America would be a lot worse if 9 11 didn't happen. So thank you, George W. Bush. No, and all no, of you, we're not going to end that way. I'm not going to let you do that. No. Okay. That would be That's bad. career suicide. <laughs> You can't kill a career that you don't have. <laughs> so but no, I, look, I'll say I'll say this for all of its uh, the things that we feel America gets wrong. I will say this: I feel very blessed to be in America, born and raised in America. Um, like, I mean, you've seen what we do to all the other countries. Yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. Like, I mean, this is the place for the be. privacy we don't have. We do got bananas, you know. Oh God, yeah, we do for the pri so many. That bananas. is the best way to end for the privacy we don't have. We do have bananas. We got bananas. Have bananas. This has been unfuck the poor. This is my wonderful friend Kenny. This is one of my favorite conversations we've ever had. I'm so glad we recorded it. Uh. Kenny wants you to give us five stars. I disagree. Give us one star. Show us you mean business. This podcast sucks. We love you. Kenny's. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. This podcast is amazing. Tell the. It doesn't matter. This is the worst ending I've ever done. This is One Fuck the Poor. This was Kenny. I'm Joe Love. And 
one star. I keep doing the same thing. Okay. It's not going to work. Do it. The do ending it. is not going to work. Take uh, two. All right. All right. That does it for uh, this episode of Unfuck the Poor. This was all about conspiracy theories. Uh, if you uh, didn't like it, um, guess what? That is just your conspiracy theory against it because this was an excellent episode and you can't prove that it wasn't. So go fuck yourself. Uh, I'm Joe Love. I'm Kenny. And uh, go give us one star. Yeah, one star, right, Kenny? That's the one good star. one. One star. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. One star. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. And um, 9-11 was an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>